Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop. And it's been a few days since I've been here in my old uh, creaky Windsor chair, uh, just sort of having a chat, having some coffee, and I've got some things to show you. Now, remember, I haven't been in any retail store in about two months, and it's going to be quite a while before that happens in this part of the country. So everything that you see are things that uh, I have rediscovered, you know, packed away in corners. I mean, what else are we doing? Seems like every time I talk to my mother, she's cleaning out a drawer. How many drawers does she have? You know what I'm talking about. Hi, Mom, what's up? Oh, I'm cleaning out a drawer. Didn't you do that yesterday? She has collected every empty Cool Whip container and bread twister since 1964. So, <laughs> I guess it's keeping her busy. Don't even get into the coat hangers. Anyway, that's how I have discovered some things, and when I head over to Jersey, hopefully, on Sunday for Mother's Day, masks on six feet apart, Pass the salt, you know, it has to come down the table on a conveyor belt. Listen, we're going to do the best we can, but we're getting there. Uh, it's May. We had some nice days here in Philadelphia, although I think it's going to be back into the 30s and 40s in a couple of days. Anyway, you really didn't tune in to hear me go bleh, 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 bleh. And I'm going to show you some textiles and things first. I don't have a lot, just a few things, but, you know, here we go. This you saw last summer, I think. Let's see, I purchased some quilts and things from a church bazaar. And this is a uh, crocheted... I want to hold on. If I get this wrong. Crochet, embroidery... How do you make an afghan? Or an affigan, as my grandmother used to call them. And both grandmothers made them. Your grandmothers made them. Some of you are sitting right there now, crocheting an affigan. Grandfathers can make these too. But anyway, this is a little baby blanket. Um, it's not... That's just where she finished whatever she was doing. Or he. This could have been the man who made it. Nice corners. You know, she or he did a good job, right? And it's kind of a... I'm going to say it's a baby blanket. That's about, well, you can see the size of it. Uh, I'll measure it and put it in the description in the auction. Um, the colors of it are kind of a green. My sunlight is a little bright. It's kind of a green, cream and green, a very 1930s color scheme. Uh, it's nice and clean, doesn't smell like anything, and I don't think it was ever used. Uh, these were bought and sold at this... Uh, church bazaar as a fundraiser. So, cute little baby blanket there. And then next, I think this is what you call embroidery. Now this has been around for a while. Uh, my mother, again, was cleaning out the attic. And the last time I was over there, she gave me a bunch of stuff, including this. She does not remember where it came from or who made it. It has no sentimental value to her, nor does it to me, so it's being sold. I'll let you have a close-up. All right, some kind of needlework with a finished edge. This looks like linen or cotton. And I'm guessing it's a small tablecloth. Uh, let's open it up. Let you see the whole thing. Again, I will give you the measurements in the in the auction listing. Uh, this is, let's see, a square. This looks like it is one square yard. It's about what it looks like. And there aren't any stains or anything on it that I can see. Maybe just a few very very light. Somebody drizzled some iced tea or something, but see. It's really hard to display fabric. 
but this should give you the idea of it. And I'll let you have a look at the back of it so you can see. It doesn't look like, it does not look like this was made from a kit of some sort. It looks like it was all freehand, but I am blissfully ignorant when it comes to handiwork such as this. So I'll leave it up to you who happen to know more than I. Okay. Gee, I hope this turns out okay. Well, as you know, the pictures will be in great detail on the eBay site. And this is really going to be hard because it's a big old cotton tablecloth. And I'm not going to be able to stretch the whole thing out, but I'll show you some of the pattern. I'll look and see if there's a tag on it. It is a tablecloth, not a sheet. And sometimes it's easy to date these because of the color scheme or the graphic, and sometimes it's a little more difficult. So we'll just say 1960s, maybe even early 70s, maybe late 50s, I don't know. Nice floral, well, let me see, let me stand up and try to, I know you can't, that doesn't help much. Maybe if I go back here, it's a big tablecloth. I should have the measurements ahead of time, but I don't. See that? Nice, classic vintage tablecloth. This one too is very clean, there are no holes in it. You might see an occasional tiny little dribble of something, but I really don't see any stains on it. Okay, that looks like that would probably cover a, uh, maybe a picnic table. Okay, that I think is the end of the fabric. So before this gets too cold. Oh, before I forget, in the next video, I'm gonna share with you a link to a video that a subscriber made. I'm not gonna do it today. I want you to be on the edge of your seats in anticipation. She made the magic cookies. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back six or seven videos to 1934 magic cookies. It was a depression era cookie recipe that I made. And some of you tried it out with great success. To others, eh. Well, a subscriber made a video. It's wonderful. She bakes the cookies. You get to see her husband and her daughter sample them. And I'm not going to tell you how it turns out. But that's coming up in the next video. Um, There'll be a link to that, and I want you to go look at it, okay? It's really funny. And she took the time to do the video and actually put it on YouTube, so I hope you'll go and watch it. Um, yeah, teasing you to get you to watch, aren't I awful? My next video. Oh, and the other thing is, another subscriber sent the cat a gift. Now, the cat, my cat, Salem, has just turned 19, and I have had him for since he was a newborn. So we've been together 19 years. He is over there asleep on the lovely throw that elderly Poodle sent me, and I can't use it because the cat has, has decided it's his. Um, but a subscriber sent Salem a little package, which we haven't opened yet. Now his birthday was the, at the end of April. It's when he turned 19. I haven't managed to get a party hat on him yet, nor have I gotten to the store to get any sardines, tuna fish, you know, listen, when you're, when you're a 19-year-old cat, you can eat anything you want. So we're going to try to have a little party for him and open up the gift that was sent. That's also going to be coming up, hopefully, today's Thursday, so that might not be till next week. We'll see. All right, now, remember this from the last video? I put this on as a buy it now, and it was purchased. I haven't shipped it yet. I guess I shouldn't be showing it because I'm like two days late on my shipping. Um, and no, I don't have one eyebrow higher than the other one. My glasses are bent. Somebody asked me. It doesn't offend me. Listen, when you do YouTube videos, you can't be offended at anything. But I'm noticing I've got to get these glasses fixed because it looks like, you know, I got something weird going on with the eyebrow thing up here. They're pretty level. But I sat on my glasses. Anyway, I sold this. I'm packing it today. 
Uh, and this, is, and I said Ellie Smith black glass, very popular in the 30s. They made variations of this and they sold them by the thousands. Maybe the floral trade had something to do with it too, I don't know. But this is the one that has the two dancing women on the front, frolicking. Um, I have another one that I dug out of the cabinet. And uh, so this one I'm gonna auction. I'm gonna, if you didn't get this one and you wanted it, I'm gonna auction this one off. Now notice the two. This one's much larger. Well, a couple inches larger. Uh, the base is circular rather than a square. The top is still crimped. The handles are exactly the same. They're unmarked. These are always unmarked. I've never seen one that's marked. But what's different about this one is there's no graphic. There's nothing embossed on it. Completely smooth on both sides of the cup. Whereas this one, smooth on the back, two women on the front, smooth on both sides. This one is not listed yet, but it's going to be. So in case you're interested, that'll go up for auction in the old curiosity shop. And uh, I have a third example that I'm keeping. It's out there in the kitchen. That one has a man and a woman on the front and the man is tooting some type of a horn, obviously enticing the woman to follow him to wherever they're headed for whatever frivolities he has in mind. It's very provocative. I'll show it to you the next time. It's a little too early in the morning for that. But anyway, I wanted to show you that. This one's for sale. This one's being packed up to be mailed out today. Two more things, actually three. I will also say that you'll often hear me say, well, I'm gonna hold on to this and live with it for a little while. And I live with things for a little while and then I go, eh, okay, I like it, I don't need it, let's pass it on. So a couple of the items that you're gonna see now are just that. This you saw a little while ago. Everybody wrecked, well, maybe not everybody. There was an enormously popular pattern made by Jeanette called herringbone. Collectors refer to it as iris and herringbone, but I think, well, that's because it has irises on it and a herringbone pattern. But I think when it was made, Je uh, did I say Jeanette? I'll have to edit this. Jeanette referred to it as a, a herringbone. You always see these in that flashed on iridescent marigold, you know, that was so popular in the 30s. It's not carnival glass, those examples. Sometimes it's clear. Uh, what other, there are a few others, but I have never found one in, um, not flashed on, um, green paint. So this is basically a milk glass base, glass, and then uh, fired on is what I'm thinking of. Then a fired on finished or a sprayed on finished, baked on in the fat, you know, in as it's coming down the line in the factory. And it's that 1930s depression green. Um, I like it in the green. I'm not necessarily a fan of the iris and herringbone pattern, and I don't care for it in the marigold, but I like it in the green. And I was going to let's put it right up there so you can admire it. It's nice. Anyway, there aren't any chips or cracks on that, and I'm going to auction that as well, because it's just something that I've decided um, I'll pass that on to somebody else. 1930s. Is anybody else aware of any fired-on colored iris and herringbone vases like that? I'm sure they're out there. They're probably in several different colors as well. Um, but I think that's unique, and the finish on it is really good. The last thing I'm going to show you and I'll probably take some, I might take some pictures and, and, and put them in here to give you a close up. But this is the 19, this is the March of 1926, Brattleboro, Vermont. And I think, if memory serves, the old uh, SD Organ Company is in, was located in Brattleboro. I should have looked that up before I did this. <laughs> I 
I am an aficionado of pump organs and, uh, and well, Esty made pipe organs as well, good, pi good uh, quality pipe organs. I think their factory is in Brattleboro, Vermont. Anybody in Vermont watching? I don't know if I have anybody from Vermont. Anyway, this is the March of 1926 Brattleboro, Vermont uh, shopper. And I guess there is a department store up there called Goodnow, Pearson and Hunt. Brattleboro's department store. A little magazine of models and merchandise. Okay, and this is March of 1926. So we can see the latest fashions. In the spring of 26. All right, the depression had not hit yet. Now the funny thing about this is, uh, and this would have been sent to you in the mail. We can see there, let me stand up. Okay, that's who it was mailed to. Someone in Peru, Vermont, looks like. And then what I love about this is not only are there advertisements for the clothing, which I'll show you. See that? But there are also uh, recipes and jokes in here. Let's see one of the jokes. It's a little bit of men's clothing too, but the men's clothing is boring. They don't get to wear anything exciting. So here's a whole page of jokes in a, in a little Vermont flyer from a department store. Let's see. Um, Lois, I want you to understand that I'm not two-faced. Louise, certainly not, dear. If you had two faces, you certainly wouldn't wear that one. <laughs> must be easily amused if I'm chortling like this over that. That's a bad joke. Let's see. Let's get another one. Um, anybody still watching? <laughs> the lecturer says, and what is there more contagious than a smile? And a voice in the balcony says, influenza. That was kind of poor taste for me to read that, considering the times, but I didn't realize it. Okay, so I'll do a few more pictures of that at the end, and you can see, and I won't be talking. I'll just play a little 1920s music and let you see some of the graphics in that magazine. Oh, I forgot. Sorry. You've seen me sell these a million and ten thousand times. Here's another one. Um, okay, you already know what it is, right? Hazel Atlas. Late 40s, early 50s, they made four of these uh, called Gay Rainbow. And it was green, blue, yellow, and orange, or some folks might think that that orange color is kind of a red color. These are, these are not creamers. They're little milk pitchers. You could use it as a creamer, but it's really a little, a little milk pitcher for your breakfast table. And um, these were a premium connected to the Kix cereal brand. Uh, so that's how, you, that's how you got these. Sometimes you would turn in your coupons at the grocery store and the grocer would actually give it to you. Uh, this is a little large to be down inside of a box of Kix cereal. Um, but often that's how they were given out to folks. And you could collect all four. They look really nice in a set of four. So there it is, and that's going up for auction as well. Okay, I want to thank everybody for joining me on my little trips. I've been taking you on some little walking tours around the city just to get out of the house and enjoy uh, some sun and a little bit of scenery. Uh, it's Thursday. I don't know when you'll watch this, but I will go ahead and say I'm Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend. So long for now.
advertise For there is a reason why I'm calling I'll be here tonight I bought a hat, pressed my clothes Even bought some fancy hose I'm calling on Phoebe tonight And father called me enough But I don't care To feel the bliss of Phoebe's kiss Is worth it, I declare I've oiled my hair And by heck, I've even gone and washed my neck I'm calling on Phoebe tonight Thank <laughs> you. 